Hey guys, Lincoln Strike here bringing you another race breakdown. And this week we're going to take a look at the Boston University Valentine Invitational Women's 800 won by Laura Raisler of Nike running her first indoor 800 in nearly three years. And it was a very, very impressive display of pacing and fitness. And we see Raisler right here and we'll get this video started. And as the laps go down, we'll break down some of the specific elements that led to her victory. So a pretty uh, sizable field for an indoor 800, as we can tell. And we see Raisler on the left side of our screen here in hip five. Again, this is her first indoor 800 since 2016, the same season she was fourth in the World Indoor Championships in the 800 there in Portland. So it's been a while for Raisler, but she heads immediately to the front through this first lap and we will freeze it. And we look at our clock here, 29.8, a really, really nice opening split for someone looking to break two minutes. Now, Raisler's run fit 159.04 on the outdoor track but on the indoor track, she's never broken two minutes. So that obviously the goal here. And it's a pretty uh, ambitious goal for Raisler, uh, being that one, she hasn't run indoors in, in three years, at least in, in the 800. And uh, you know, the time of the year it is, and it's her season debut. So again, she's got a bold goal and she's really going for it. And one thing I do want to highlight right off the bat, for someone trying to break two minutes, there's no, there's no pacer, that's supposed to be a question mark there. No pacer in this race. So Raisler, the favorite here, has to take this on entirely by herself. And uh, she gets out well with a 29.8 opener. And we're gonna keep looking at these individual laps because they're gonna be very, very consistent. And that's quite impressive without a pacer. All right, so we'll keep rolling here and we freeze it. I do wanna highlight some of the other athletes in this field, athletes that will focus on as the race develops further. This athlete right here is Allie Wilson of Monmouth. Now the women's 800 in the NCAA this season, kind of wide open. We haven't got the fast performances from Sammy Watson, the NCAA outdoor champ uh, that we would have expected thus far this season. Wilson, kind of a dark horse, and this will end up being a huge race for her. Her indoor PB coming in was only 205, but she will blow that out of the water as we go along. And then behind her, we have Emily Richards, who now runs for Hoka uh, New Jersey New York Track Club. She's a former D3, many times over champion in the 800. Her PR, though, coming in was only 205, and she's going to smash that as well. So Raceler is the big focus here, but some other athletes are going to get some big, big PRs when all is said and done. So we'll keep rolling. And you can tell it's already starting to string out that first lap at 29.8 has really sent this field into motion. And Raisler looking confident here. Posture is very nice. Wilson trying to rally there next to another athlete, the New Balance athlete, I believe that's Seagrave. But here we'll stop at a, another lap. And it, it, this clock here, a little bit slow. They, they are a little bit fast, I should say. They, they cut it a little bit short of the line. But we look here, the split, about 59.9 there. It's about 59.7 through the 400. So a really, really consistent split. Racer goes from a 29.8 opening to a 29.9, I mean, just right on the mark, like a, like a metronome. And again, she's doing this by herself and the gap between her and the field already starting to build here. As you can see about a two or three meter window that started to open up. So Raisler running confidently, pacing herself incredibly well, considering this is her first indoor 800 in some three years. And uh, already halfway, the sub two watch is, is on here. So we'll keep on moving. You see that gap starting to grow, Seagrave and Wilson trying to bridge that gap. And it's actually Richards that's back in fifth right now. So she, she has a little bit of work to do. And uh, we'll freeze it here. We take a look at a little bit of an encouragement from a, a man we may recognize. That's Garrett Scantling, a former athlete, track and field decathlete at, uh, at Georgia. I believe he and Raisler are, are dating now. But giving her some encouragement, that's obviously something that can't hurt. You know, urging her on, letting her know that a PR is possibly in the cards if she keeps this up and uh, 
keeps her foot on the crucial pedal of the third lap. Obviously, in the 800 indoors, so much is determined off of the third lap where you really start to feel the pace. And being that racer is running by herself, she really could use that encouragement. So we'll keep this one rolling. And you see Wilson from Monmouth, the senior who's only ever made NCAAs one time in her career, and that was this past outdoor season. She slots into second. So if she can hang on to this last lap, she's going to run a big time. And we freeze it here. We have one lap to go, and we see the clock, 129 point. It's about 129.6. This clock, actually, this time a little bit more accurate, 129.56. I want to highlight Racer split, splits because we've talked about no pacer, but she might as well have had a pacer on this one because her consistent laps are what tells the story of this successful race for her. She goes 29.8 to start out, 29.9 on the second lap, and then 29.8. You cannot get more perfect than that. She's, she has uh, sub two right in her, in her sights here at this point with those consistent laps. Despite not really having any competition here, she is running a, 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 just a perfectly timed race. So we'll keep this one going. And Wilson in position, and we can start to see at the top of the screen here, Richard starting to move up as well. One thing I do want to freeze here, we kind of see some of these other athletes, the form breaking down just a little bit, and that's understandable in an 800. I mean, you're going all out. It's a, it's a four-lap sprint. But for Raceler, being that her, her background kind of was in the, in the sprints, dating back to her high school days in North Dakota and then even at Oregon some, the posture is just so smooth. I mean, Raceler, when she's at her best, she doesn't even look like she's trying that hard. And, and that's exactly what we see here. She looks effortless, very, very smooth, and isn't showing any signs of fatigue at all. So we'll keep this going. Obviously, we've got an insurmountable gap at this point. She just has to finish. Sub two minutes is right there for the taking. Just has to close. The gap continues to grow at this point. You just got to finish here. 156 on the clock, seven, eight, and oh, she did it. And it's, it's a little hard to tell from here, but you can, t you can see that Racer kind of knows it. There's a little faint smile on, knowing that she's just run the third fastest time of her entire career, indoors or outdoors, 159.8. And this is just such a huge thing. She's had some injuries. She's had uh, not all, she hasn't always had great success since turning professional. It's been an up and down career for Laura Raisler, a multiple time NCAA champion at Oregon. You kind of figured she would explode, but the women's 800 is just so deep in the United States with Raven Rogers, Ajay, Ajay Wilson, Brenda Martinez, and Raisler's kind of been lost in that mix the last couple of years, but this is a race that could possibly set her back on, on, uh, on the right track. Obviously, no world indoors this year, but it's just a sign that things are going right. Training, everything is clicking for her. So the time here, 159.76, it's actually going to be corrected to about 159.80. She closes her last lap. Now, it was her slowest split, but still on, in that consistent window, 30.19, and the total equals out to 159.80. Eight oh, so we'll watch the rest of these athletes finish. And there is Wilson and Richards, and we'll watch Raceler totally spent from the effort, but she's going to acknowledge the crowd here and and thank them for uh, for cheering her on. And we see the time officially here one fifty nine eight zero. There we see Wilson, her two oh two sixty five. It's the fastest non-converted time in the NCAA this season. Martha Bissa of Norfolk State uh, ran a faster flat track converted mark with a 202.65. Puts Wilson, somebody who had never made the indoor meet before, she's definitely going to be going to NCAA indoors and maybe be one of the favorites now. So a big breakout race from her. And then Richards with the 202 as well, uh, 202.92 as you see here. Her PB coming in was also only 205, a big big breakout for her. But the story, of course, Laura Raisler running her first indoor 800 in three years and really knocking it out of the park. So that's the end of this race breakdown. Stay tuned to the site for more coming up later this week.